I personally am happy that I can finally say this for the first time in five years. The New York Mets have officially protected Pete Alonso, signing designated hitter J.D. Martinez to a one-year, $12 million contract earlier this week. Giving an instant offensive boost to the Mets lineup, Martinez is coming off another career year with the Dodgers, slashing 271, 321, 572 with 33 home runs, 103 runs batted in, a 135 weighted runs created plus across 479 plate appearances. After turning down a contract offer from the Giants earlier this offseason, when asked about joining the Mets, Martinez explained that San Francisco is not the best hitter-friendly park for me. If I go there, people are going to say that I'm washed or too old, and I will find myself out of the game. I want to give myself the best opportunity. Martinez is slated to earn just $4.5 million in 2024 and will receive deferred payments of $1.5 million annually from 2020. 34 to 2038, creating around a $9 million luxury tax penalty on the Mets 2024 payroll. As a late addition to the Mets roster, Martinez has agreed to begin the regular season in AAA Syracuse to ramp up for 2024. With his ramp up to take about 10 to 15 days, Carlos Mendoza reveals that he expects Martinez to be slated into the cleanup position behind Pete Alonso as the ideal situation this season. Mendoza also added that Martinez has been facing live pitching, and you could see him as early as April 7th when the Mets are in Cincinnati. Martinez will be entering a 30 six-year-old season with no signs of slowing down as one of the best hitters of this generation. With the inevitable destruction of playing time, the Mets have decided to option Mark Vientos to AAA Syracuse, with DJ Stewart expected to begin the season on the Mets opening day roster amid Martinez ramp up in the minor leagues regarding any other roster moves. Now, obviously, we already know about the impact that J.D. Martinez would bring to the Mets lineup. We've talked about him so many times on this podcast, so many times on live streams. Me and Roe did a live stream talking about the signing initially when it happened. Frank, you did a video on your channel. So, obviously, J.D. Martinez is a big impact, but there's also the other factor of Mark Vientos and the situation there. We can also talk about some other roster moves that were made as well. So this is a bigger conversation, obviously, with a pivotal move such as J.D. Martinez being added to the roster as early as maybe April 7th. It's just very interesting. I mean, there's a lot of different angles. Uh, and I think, you know, one of the big parts is, you know, we talked all off season about how, you know, David Stearns hasn't lied to us. He said what the plan was and all the moves have shown that. And that's just it's been very consistent throughout the entirety of the off season. And, you know, we wanted, at least, you know, Carson and myself, Andrew as well, uh, you know, we definitely wanted a DH in here. I mean, we, we've talked about it for years now. Uh, the power protection for Pilons was one thing, but the other part of just the designated hitter position not being a productive spot in the lineup for the Mets is the other big part of it. Like, that was supposed to be a good thing for teams. Like, oh, here's more offense. Like, this is a guy who does need to be a good fielder, just a good hitter. And it ended up being one of the weakest parts of the Mets lineup. Like, they couldn't find someone to just be in there and be a productive player. He shall not be named. Yeah, exactly. Plenty of guys who don't even want to name because we've gone through the list a ton of times. But J.D. Martinez is able to solve both of those things by batting behind Pete Alonso, getting that power protection, while also addressing the designated hitter position. Uh, obviously, you know, grading against lefties. Like, there's so many things to like about it. Good guy in the clubhouse, mentor the young players, all that. But I think that, you know, just with the whole Mark Vientos angle of it, I, I've said it plenty of times. I just don't really see the long term fit here. Uh, and you know, even with even if he does like well, like even that's saying something because I feel like how many times do you have to, to send the guy to the minors? You know, I, I just find that like if they actually did believe in him, like the way they say they believed in him, he would have got his full time playing opportunity. Now, I mean, this is now three years in a row where he's going to play in the minor leagues and major leagues in the same season. So I, I think at some point you have to make a firm decision. Like he's going to be a, like, a, I don't even know, a depth piece in the minors, or he's going to be a contributor towards the majors. And if he's neither, he needs to go for something that kind of helps your organization more with Mark Vientos. He's strictly a DH because if Pilon's your long term, which he really should be, he's not playing first. We've seen him at third. That's not his home either. So the JD Martinez thing is like, because here's my issue. Let's just say you say, okay, well, you know, Mark Vientos is just going to do the job next year. You know, like we just have J.D. Martinez for this year. 
it's almost like, well, why did you even sign JD Martinez? You know what I mean? It's like, it's just kind of weird where it's like you put yourself in a position where then the pressure's on Vientos yet again. And it's like, okay, here's your opportunity. Get the job done. I, I feel like it's, it's gone to the point now where it's like, you just have to get somebody to kind of play that position and stay there that it, it's just become very weird. And I think the other thing that is just very interesting to me, like DJ Stewart making the team, uh, and then this whole report of like he's gonna travel. They kept they kept saying it on the broadcast during the game. He's gonna travel with the team. That doesn't mean that he made the roster. And that's the part that's really weird to me is that I, I don't know where they're going with that uh, because they they've talked about like okay, there's a certain cap of how many pitchers you can have. So it's not like there's another pitcher that's gonna make it over him. And they already told you JD Martinez is not gonna be on the opening day roster. So, and we know it's not going to be Mark Vientos. So then who is it? Like, I don't know why they can't just say, like, DJ Stewart's on the opening day roster. Who else is going to take that job? I just can't see them looking at another hitter. I just can't see it. Because, n- number one, there's nobody that's really, like, notable on the offseason market right now, hitter-wise. It's like, okay, they're going to add this guy. Uh, and then if they did, like, what would their role be? Tommy Pham? Oh, my, oh my God. No, they can't. No. Where's he going to play? Why'd you get J.D. Martinez? Like, it, it's no, it, it can't, it can't be. Him. There's just no way. It's just weird to me. Maybe don't sign Joey freaking Wendell. Yeah, it's not Joey Wendell. But I, I just think that it's just interesting to me as far as like what they're doing in the short term, what they're doing in the long term. I'm just, I'm really intrigued by it because it's like, to me, they've done this with Viento so much with the give him a chance, don't give him a chance, give him a chance. I, I would just move on at this point. Uh, I, I think that he's finding himself in the same position that guy who was a hot topic of discussion these past couple of weeks, J.D. Davis was in, where it's like you see the potential they have when they hit the ball hard, but if they don't get that consistent playing time, you're never going to see consistent results. And Carson's made the comparisons to the two of them all the time. They have the same strengths. They have the same weaknesses. They both struggle with velocity, particularly with that fastball, uh, you know, the, the ball up, uh, you know, trying to, you know, lift the ball, things like that. They may hit it hard, but, you know, the, the whips, like – I find that he's going to – and they both are not very good defensively. They're both supposed to be third basemen, but they end up becoming designated hitters. And it's like – I just feel like he's going to find himself in that same position at some point with the way they've treated this that it's like I, I want them to really make a concrete decision on, you know, kind of what they're doing going forward. And if that means training him for a guy who's like going to be more of a long-term fit, can do more things than just hit, it's something to explore. Uh, because right now, I, I just think it's just an all around, just very weird situation. With, and not, and like I said, JD makes it. I'm not worried about him. Like I know he's gonna do good, but I mean, just like with Vientos, with Stewart, like it's just some guys who just don't seem to fit right now. And I, I'm just curious to see what their roles are gonna be and and how they're gonna approach that part of it. Personally, kind of get the feeling of just in terms of Vientos that with Stewart, with G Man Choi. Uh, with all of these guys who are going to be starting in the minors, J.D. Martinez, when he's in AAA, it seems like they're trying to build like some kind of surplus of bats they could plug in at any point. But it's really hard to have Vientos as one of those pieces to the surplus when he well, is one of G-Man those Choi guys too, that needs to Because he's everybody. another guy who's first base in DH. And it's like... That's JD and Alonzo. So it's like where wh- like where would G Man Choi even fit? Like as a bench bat? It's like who's he gonna pinch it for? I mean, I, I have a guy in mind, but you know, other than that, it's like I, I don't know, just the overall role. And like we talk about um the value we, we had this conversation was a couple years ago in the Mets were in the postseason run. Terrence Gore. So we talked about like, okay, well, what are the other things that you could do to make you worthy of a roster spot? Like what are what are some other things you can do? And with G Man Choi and even DJ Stewart, I feel like those guys are pretty limited. Like they kind of do one thing and that's really it. They don't have much versatility. So I, I just wonder from a roster construction standpoint, like it makes more sense why like a Zach Short would make it and Joey Wendell makes it, you know, just because they could do more things. So that's the other part that I'm intrigued is like, okay you have g-man towards the surplus but really he should only be coming in for injury honestly because the other spots that he plays are by guys who should be playing every day we also don't know what the deal is with luke void we don't know he probably is gonna i i don't even contract. consider him a factor honestly uh, he was in the minors all of last year even with their offense struggling he looked terrible in spring i i don't he's not even he's like at the bottom bottom of the pack like i He's just a Again, it's it's part of the surplus of like yeah. those experienced bats or whatever, but I just don't think that Vientos really plugs into it very well because these younger players with the upside, they need the opportunity to play every day. And I don't think that he should be seen as 
a part-time player, especially with all that he was talked up to be all offseason. This is a fantastic addition to the lineup. I don't personally see any other way you can put it that way. Just to put in perspective of how good J.D. Martinez was last year, his slugging percentage was 10 points lower than Alonzo's 2019 rookie season. That's the guy we're going to have protecting Pete Alonso right now. Yes, granted, he is a lot older, but I'm pretty certain that he has at least another year left in him of being just a great power hitter. He was just unbelievable last year. He's so consistent. His exit velocities are so great and consistent. And we just need bombs. It's that simple. I think we need homers. We need more homers in this lineup. Now Pete's going to get more strikes thrown at him. In terms of like this whole situation with Vientos, look, I was evolving on this subject I, originally i thought no we should just let vientos play as spring kept going it was and it wasn't even anything vientos was or wasn't doing i think i just realized that you know do i truly think that vientos ceiling is a long-term dh for us i mean maybe his ceiling is but like i think it would be really difficult a really difficult path for him to get there um based off of a lot of the rates we've seen uh in the majors and i know he didn't get consistent playing time but like, there's also just, you know, I, I worry a little bit that he would be basically a 2021 Bobby Dahlbeck, which when he had like, he had like 25 homers, had like a 35 K rate and like a 104 WRC plus. I think that was, in my opinion, the most likely scenario uh, with Vientos. And that's not good enough to be a long-term DH. And a guy like J.D. Martinez, who's one of the best hitters of this generation, would be an immediate impact, incredible addition to the lineup, which makes the whole lineup so much scarier and safer. You know, I completely support the decision to option him. I was a little confused about, you know, maybe he'll DH for 10 days, but, you know, I wonder if the reason he was optioned was because is it productive for him to see 10 days of high velocity and then just go right back down to the minors? I don't know. You got to think about that. Uh, just mixing up his situation, you know, he'd be DH maybe Stearns wants him to play a lot more third base I listened to his press conference today that's what it sounded like I expect DJ Stewart to make the roster I don't see who else would make it over him it does sound like the Stearns is keeping an eye on the the opt-out uh, market of these players on other organizations so we'll see about that I'm really happy about the signing you know JD Martinez would have had 39 homers at City Field last year in 113 games Th this is an unbelievable addition to the lineup and I think that we have a legitimate shot at competing for a wild card spot this year. And we know that all these guys are one year deals. Most of these guys are unlikely to be back next year. So regardless if we're good or bad, this might sound a little bit too optimistic, but it's really kind of hard to see us losing <laughs> like in long term losing through this season. It's not possible for them to lose. Like it really isn't. Like if you're talking about in terms of 2025, if 2025 is the one when you're going to go completely for it, you can't lose. There's no way to lose with this team right now. And that's the good part about it. Now, listen, if you want, if you're upset that you have to wait another year or whatever, maybe. But again, it's one of those wait and see years that they kind of needed. And we, we've talked about this before. But also, I think this team is going to be in a wild card race and a dog fight for that yeah. last spot. You don't know what this team will look like at the trade deadline. It, it could look one way, it could look another. But maybe we'll be looking at adding another big bat, maybe a pitcher. You know, I, I'm just really excited for the season because, you know, how great would it be to have a winning season, but uh, which is kind of an appetizer for like a more long-term sustainable uh, stretch. I just want to see this team succeed. And I think the only way we could have done that, truly made sure we were doing that, is by signing J.D. Martinez. All best of luck to Mark Vientos. I really think he has potential. There's no doubt about it. He hits the ball so hard. He's going to be in the majors at certain points this year. And I, I disagree with you, Frank. I, I think we should definitely keep him throughout the year. Only because... Who is your backup third baseman if he goes down? Uh, like, do you want Joey Wendell I, playing every day? I, I defensively, yes. I, I would rather have Joey Wendell play than, than mm -hmm. Mark Vientos at third. I, I, I'm that down on him defensively. So you would take Wendell over Vientos in a Beatty injury scenario? Or yes, I disagree. But you know, I, I, I hear that, and from that perspective, it does make sense to move on from Vientos. But you never know. Uh, he's a young player. He's going to get opportunities. And uh, you don't know how Beatty's gonna play, so I'd rather see I'd rather see both Beatty and Vientos play before I give Joey Wendell the. In terms of just JD Martinez, <laughs> Road, you just touched on it a little bit of how many home runs he would have had in City Field, and I made a post about this on Twitter. He played not even a full season last year, and he got 
479 plate appearances. Now, roughly a full season of plate appearances would be 650 plate appearances. And if you prorate J.D. Martinez at 36 years old last year, he hit 33 in 479. That would be 45 home run pace in 650 plate appearances. And then you have 39 expected home runs at City Field in 479 plate appearances, which gives you the pace of in 650 plate appearances, he would hit 53 expected home runs at City Field. So you are getting juice ball, Pete Alonso, rookie year type of production from the power source at City Field last year, if he played a full season, which is ridiculous. I mean, that is insane. So imagine putting Pete Alonso with rookie Pete Alonso type of numbers, who's also 36 years old. And also, by the way, you're only paying him $4.5 million. That's insane. The only problem is that uh, you have to, you don't get to play a game in City Field. You have to play some games in, in San Francisco, and and then he's going to be washed and old. So you have, you have to factor in like those games in your projection as well. Well, also... We don't care. Second off, (laughs) for Mark Vientos, I think that I don't think he gets traded before opening day. Like in the next 48 hours, they just move on from him, obviously, because J.D. Martinez is not a long-term fix. We already know that. He's not going to be here forever. Whether they re-sign him after an amazing year this year in the best-case scenario possibility, he ain't going to be here forever. Let's be real for a second. He's eventually going to retire as much as he probably doesn't want to. (laughs) All careers end at one point. Vientos, I think this year of how they're looking at it, the best way I could probably describe it is J.D. Martinez is hitting well, possibly trading Vientos at the trade deadline with him basically just rotting away in AAA. Then if the Mets are playing bad, J.D. Martinez is hitting well. They could also trade J.D. Martinez on a one-year deal as a rental and then call Vientos up at the end of the trade deadline. So I'm not going to put out any scenarios as J.D. Martinez not hitting well because I think he's going to be a productive hitter no matter what. I think we can pretty much pencil him in, whether at his worst or at his best. He's probably going to be giving you 25 home runs and being one of the best power hitters on the team. Does it kind of stink in terms of Mark Vientos? Yes, it does. I think that it's not fair to him. Kind of in the position that they've kind of put themselves in of the last few years. I mean, Mark Vientos should have been playing last year. He really should have gotten all of the playing time after that trade deadline. There was nowhere to go. There was no reason as to man who now, who shall not be named should have even been there. The guy was making, what, $1.5 million? Cut bait on that. He was going to be a free agent anyway. So, I mean, it just it didn't make any sense. In that certain scenario, I feel like the Mets, they're going to try to clean it up and maybe get as much value as they could get from Mark Vientos if all is going well with J.D. Martinez at the Major League level. Kind of a tough log jam when you think about it, especially when Mark Vientos was talked about as somebody as... Maybe they believe in him as a possible DH option. They want to see what they get from... I personally don't think that they committed to Mark Vientos as much as people think they did. I think that they kept the options open, but in terms of the luxury tax, in terms of the payroll, they wanted to get the right price. They got the right price for J.D. Martinez. They even fixed everything around where he's making $4.5 million. It lowers the luxury tax penalty to like $9 million or whatever, which is like around the range of what they had set aside for the trade deadline. If the Mets... In terms of Pete Alonso, this could be, and we said this on stream too, this could be your last year with Pete Alonso. You don't know. Why not protect him for the first time in five years and do it, especially with, as Rhodes said, the consistency of Mark Vientos as to where maybe he isn't a long-term fix and maybe there isn't just a way you can display any consistency. Maybe, to be honest, the damage is just done. Like maybe, like at this point, he's coming into a 24-year-old season. There's only so much time he could just sit there rotting away in AAA if he's hitting pretty well.